Okay, picking up the uh, uh, the block here at the machine shop. Um, they've got the uh, uh, the block here. It's been surfaced, bored, and honed. You can see uh, if you can see. There's a nice good cross hatching in there. Clean this out. You see the good cross hatching? That'll catch some oil in there, so keep it nice and smooth. Um, and if you recall, this particular piston right here, this cylinder had a big gouge in there. And now that's all been taken care of. That's nice and clean now. Um, so when you're when you're getting your engine ready to go into the machine shop, I was just talking with uh, Jeff, right? Uh -huh. Jeff, um, and uh, he was saying that uh, when you take it in, make sure you strip it down as much as you can. Take all the uh, accoutrement off. Make sure that uh, you know you don't have any fittings on there because uh, I know, for instance, on this side over here, there's uh, an oil relief valve uh, on the NG MGB. And uh, so you want to take sure, make sure that any of that stuff is taken out so that um, they don't have to disassemble it. Uh, and so none of that stuff gets lost when, it, when it's running through on the machine. And we'll, we also do a, a thermal cleaning. Yes. So if there's a sensor or some kind of plastic, if it gets missed, it's just going to melt into yeah. the hole. So that's why you want to get it all. So yeah, when they do the thermal cleaning, um, any, any kind of plastics or gaskets or rubber sealers or O-rings, um, those will those will get melt, melted in there and it'll it'll just be a mess. So um, we ordered the wrong pistons. So we're gonna order the right pistons back again, and then we'll have those press fit. On the 18V, uh, it doesn't use circlips, and uh, the the 18V is heat uh, fit onto the connecting rods. Um, the uh, and so um, we're gonna need to bring the right pistons back and get those. Um, uh, press fit back in place. Um, we'll do another video on that when we get to that point. Uh, but we'll take this back to the uh, the workshop, and we're gonna we're gonna put the uh, crankshaft in, which has been uh, bored out. Uh, as you recall, this engine had a um, blown head gasket, and it was parked in a barn for over 20 years. So a lot of those bearing surfaces were shot, and uh, so thankfully we have a really good uh, machine shop able to do all the work for us and get that taken care of. Let's So when you have a head that's warped, you can't just slap it back on because you see how this touches at the ends uh -huh. where the machine cut uh -huh. ends, but all this is not touched right here in the middle. Yeah. So if you if you want to torque this head on, you just blow the head gasket right in. Right, 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 blow it right out, huh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And yeah, basically what it does, it'll just make a few very light cuts, you know, a few thousands mm -hmm. at a time yeah. until it. What blade. what kind of a, uh, a tool is tool tip is that? It's a diamond, right? Uh, it's it's called PCD. It's a polycrystalline diamond. So polycrystalline diamond. Powdered. Huh? They take diamond powdered powder it uh. up and then compress it and regrow like a crystal structure. Huh. So That's pretty cool. It, but it's actually like a diamond based. So Great. It's very sharp. That's why this it looks like a mirror finish almost. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. It's a really polished. Jeez, <laughs> pretty neat well hey thanks for your time yeah, no problem. on this side of the engine um, it uh, it needs to be cleaned up a little bit because um, in the uh, in the machine shop to keep it from rusting when it was being stored uh, they sprayed this outside of the block down uh, but there was a little bit of uh, I'm gonna try to stay positive um, so the gasket surfaces here has paint on it, and so these need to be brought back to bare metal. Uh, so I'm going to go through, and any place where the gaskets go, I'm going to bring it back to bare metal. And so we'll bring these, um, bring these clean, get these threads all clean, so that we get a good seal when we start putting the oil on. 
I think, um, uh, I don't think there's any on this side. Oh, maybe this right here, just that one surface right there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning off some paint. We're gonna repaint this anyway a different color. It'll be uh, kind of a dove gray, but uh, those have to be cleaned off. All right, there you go, all nice and cleaned up. One little note, um, in this groove down the bottom, this is where the, the oil filter would normally be seated in there. Um, but in this groove right down here, there was uh, the remnants of a really hard piece of plastic. This is where the distributor gets connected. Uh, that's all cleaned off. But this is, uh, this is what's left of what should have been a pliable piece of rubber. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> that was, there's no way that that's going to seal anything. It had a big crack in it anyway. Uh, quite likely, um, that piece of rubber was damaged when the engine was uh, uh, heat and pressure washed. Um, but regardless, when it was in the dip, it probably uh, killed that piece of rubber. All the rubber in the engine should have been removed, but I guess I missed that one. But that's a lot better now, and we'll have a good seal when we, when we do get the oil filter back on. All right, so I've got the uh, majority of the, uh, the flat mating uh, gasket surfaces. This is the front end. Um, I got them all cleaned up, all the rust taken off of those. Uh, starting inspection, uh, obviously when you have an engine apart, you don't, and before you put it back together, you want to make sure that if there's any problems, you don't want to have to take it apart again. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm looking at uh, uh, screw holes. I'm looking to see if any of these are stripped um, and if they need to be retapped or put some, uh, some thread helpers in there, whatever. But um, here's something I noticed that I'm going to have to take care of. So this is the mount where the oil pump goes. And I don't know if you can see, but when I cleaned it here, um, it made kind of a shiny surface. You can, I don't know if you can, you can see from this view. See how that is pushed up? Somebody have, oh, has over torqued this bolt and it caused the threads on the top side to stand proud. Um, and so Basically, when you put a gasket in there between the oil pump and this this uh, threaded hole, um, you're going to have a spacer in there, and that gasket's not going to get a good clean um, seal all the way around this surface. It'll be standing on top of that surface there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put a chamfer on these to bring these threads back down, uh, and I'm going to run a tap through that just to make sure that those threads don't have a problem. It lo they look pretty good from here but that top edge needs to come down. I don't want that ridge to be there. That same, same problem on this one. And this one's pretty good, but you can see it looks like it's broken off. So it, and still, it needs to be cleaned up. So I'm gonna run a chamfer on these um, just to make sure that they're not gonna have any problem with sealing the oil pump. Now, one of the other things that I found is over here on the water pump. Um, let me see if I can put a light on this so you can see a little better. There's four bolts that go on the water pump, you know, right here. One, two, three, four. And it looks as though, first of all, you can see this is not really that flat anymore. It's been on and off a few times. A couple different water pumps have been through. Uh, it looks like it has been leaking. And this is probably why. I don't know if you can see. There are no threads until you get really deep into that hole. Uh, it should look a bit more like this, where you can see the threads right in there. You see the threads start to show up before you get too deep. So um, I'm going to have to look at either retapping this uh, the next size higher I mean it's you can tell it's uh, the threads have been pulled out it's uh, the edges are are uh, chipped away it's had it's been a serious problem with this car it's probably always leaked radiator fluid um, which might have been reason the source of why it overheated and ultimately blew, blew a head gasket um, obviously if you're running low on coolant and it's a chronic problem you don't always check it um, that could be the source. So uh, I'm going to solve that problem straight away, and uh, we're going to put some new threads into this water pump uh, mount. I think maybe I'll just thread them all the next size higher 
and um, and we'll have a, a lot better sealing on that. I'm gonna go ahead and chamfer those uh, uh, those tap points. You can see there's a little ridge on here. I'm gonna just knock that ridge down. Um, I've taped off any of the places where the oil would normally travel, and trying to trying to limit the uh, the shavings to just this little area here. I've set the block on the edge so it's not falling down into the uh, into the engine. Uh, and I, you know, I put some baffling uh, paper towels up in there just to make sure that uh, I'm managing where the where the chips go. It's not going to be that many, but I don't want any of them to be left behind. I think I'm going to put a magnet down there too, just to manage it. This is the chamfer bit that I was talking about. It goes in the drill. Uh, it doesn't have uh, thread, so it's not going to go that deep. And here I put a magnet in the bottom just to catch uh, any of the shavings that come out, so that the drill motor with its fan doesn't blow the shavings around. So let's go ahead and chamfer these things. I'll show you what they look like after the fact. All right, there you can see, um, all nice and cleaned off. This surface is now flat. It's not pushing out anymore. And uh, I run some brake free up in there to make sure that there was any, uh, any shavings or anything. Uh, and I got some paper towel stuck in there. Uh, any shavings up in there. Uh, that that's all cleaned out, and uh, I think that that handle that problem is handled. Again, when you're doing this chamfer bit, you just want to hover it over the thing. You don't want to put any down pressure on it, but you do want to manage the shavings. And you can see, you got everything all cleaned up real nice. No contamination entered into the engine. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to have a look at here is this water pump surface. I've cleaned this up real nice. Let's see, I I ran some uh, 400 on a uh, a piece of a straight bar. Just to make sure that the surface is flat and that highlighted how the edge of this one you can see because it was over torque and had pushed out a little bit um, all this is not from uh, chamfering this is from uh, over tightening and or using the wrong size nut and then pulling it out whatever this is all broken so um i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put uh uh um thread inserts on all four of these because they all four have a lot of stress. Let me see, this is another one. Look at this one here. Here's the, the right bolt size right here. Check this. It just, there's no threads until you get like three quarters of an inch in. It's this, goes this, goes that far before getting any threads. So that one definitely is, that's the worst. But even this one down here, you screw it in a bit you can see how wobbly that is. I mean, that's uh, it's in a, a good three quarters of an inch and still really wobbly. So these two on the top definitely need to be uh, uh, have the the inserts put in. But you can see there's some stress on this one, and this one's chipped away as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, uh, thread inserts on all of these. Um, they'll be uh, five sixteenths by twenty four uh, when they're done. Um, so that's what's up next. All right, so the first step here is I need to drill these out. Uh, in order to do that, we need to know the distance. So basically, if you take your, uh, your caliper here and you measure the tail that comes out, it'll tell you how deep that you need to go. You can, you can adjust that one way or the other. And then when you get where you want it, then you have the measurement right there can read it up here if you want. I'm just going to use this to know where to tape off my uh, my drill bit. Um, these drill the these uh, Healy Lock um, thread kits they have kind of a, an oddball size. These need to be drilled out at uh, 21 sixty-fourths, um, and I'll make them this deep so that I don't go into the water jacket. But you can see on the inside um, the bolts go through, but they don't go through. They stop right here. So you don't want to you don't want to puncture the water jacket um, and drill too deep. So I'm just going to verify all the depths, make sure everything is all the same, and then I will start drilling. There's something in that one. Some foreign debris in there. I have to clean that out. All right. All right. I dug out what was in that hole. There was some gasket sealing material, some of the, uh, the black sealant 
or blue, whatever color it is. But anyway, there was a bunch of sealant in there that was uh, clogging up that hole. So um, dug that out. Um, but as like as lives everything in this vehicle, everything's a little bit different for each instance. So if you're looking at these holes, this is the distance. Everything's fine. But when you get to this one up here, it's a little shorter. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set that to my depth. That'll, the shorter depth will be my default. And that, that's more than enough threads um, to get the job done. All right, so I got, uh, got all four of them drilled out, cleaned them out really good with some, uh, uh, some WD. I don't know if you can see the bottom of those. Uh, anyway, um, they're nice and clean, good, good vertical. Uh, I got a, a really good um, uh, adjustment of the nice and vertically uh, true so that they're not going to be, you know, canted one way or the other. So I've uh, started tapping this one. This is almost done. Um, so when you're doing your tap, make sure you uh, measure the depth in this as well because you can, you can lose track of how far you're going to go and you don't want to force the tap uh, to go too deep because then you'll break it off and that would be the worst case scenario um, trying to get a retrieve a tap out of there um, when you're tapping again just like when you're drilling make sure that it's um, uh, absolutely perpendicular to the uh, the surface uh, go in and out with your taps uh, go back and forth back and forth you're trying to clean out uh, the spall as you're um, making the threads um, and so when you get done you should have a nicely tapped out. I don't know if you can get a good focus on this. Well, you know, it's cast, so tapping it's not going to be that straight. Um, but anyway, it's tapped out to the outside diameter of the, um, the Healy lock. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do the other three, and then we'll, we'll uh, jump back in when I start ins inserting those threads. Okay, there you go. All drilled and tapped and ready for the inserts. I'm going to start getting those ready. All right, so if you've never done these before, uh, the Healy coil, they give you this little tool. Um, basically what it is is um, there's a little tab at the bottom. You can see this little screw that they give you engages that little tab. And they give you a uh, like a slide mechanism here to make it a little easier for you to get started, to start it in the hole. Um, because it's a spring um, and you know if if you don't have it under tension it's a little springy so this this device here uh, allows you to keep it under tension uh, so that it stays um, uh, formed right so that you can slide it in there once you get that all the way in as far as you're gonna go then uh, you can see whoops I don't know if you can actually see down in there see um, you just take a uh, I just use a flat handled um, screwdriver and a hammer and I just give the give the little edge of this a tap and it will break off and then you just blow it out with an air compressor and it will come right out. Um, but the idea there is you need to take this that little tab needs to come out when you're done. And there you go. All the inserts installed. I even uh, cleaned up around the edges here because uh, when we were tapping, it caused a little bit of deform deformation. It wasn't flat anymore. But uh, they, uh, they have nice threads, and they thread in really nicely with the screw. So I think that uh, we'll call that success, and it's uh, bullet dodged. I know that the water, the water pump will get a good seal when we get this thing re re rebuilt.